Hi, welcome to Watercolor with Viv. I'm Viv and today I'm just going to give you a quick demo on Valentine's flowers. The first thing I want you to do is paint the stamens with a golden yellow and this is New Gamboge. Just paint it in there directly and then we're going to let that dry. And, and I'm not going to go over every single detail of this painting. This is just like a, a demo for you to see and kind of follow along. Each petal is going to be done with almost the same type of technique. So it's not any, it's, it's really simple. That's my point. So on this petal, I've got the new gamboge. I put that down first and now I'm going with the rose color and I'm coming back in and letting them mix and mingle and bleed together in the middle. And I'm just going to pull the rose all the way to the tip of the petals. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to put a little darker, um, a little bit of a darker violet shade. Mm, I don't think I like that, so I'm going to go over that, I think, with a bright rose shade. Because I think that's a little too dull. Yeah, the bright rose looks much better. So I'm just going to put that around the edges while it's still wet and let that bleed and blend in. And the good thing about this, this it's kind of a fantasy flower. There's no reference photo. I just kind of drew it out of my head and just decided to paint it. So now I'm going to the next petal. And that right there is a primary red. And it's also a pan watercolor. I painted the edge of the petal. Then I'm taking clear water and just blending it out, up and out. And I want to work around each petal, let the petals dry. I don't want them to bleed together. I'm going to go in here and darken some areas around this the stamen for the petal because the petals toward the center have that yellow on the insides. And now I'm putting the gold, I mean the the gold and letting it mix with the rose color here on the inside of this petal. And darkening up just the edges to let it be like little shadows. I'm going to put some more of the new gamboge, the gold color. I'm going to pick a little bit of that up with a dry brush because it's too watery right there. That's better. Now I'm going to come back and put the um, rose at the tip and just let it kind of bleed down into the new gamboge. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the excess water with the dry brush. And then I'm going to add a little more rose around the edges just to give it some variety and some dimension. Blending it in with a little bit of clear water. Just blending it together. I'm just going to add a little bit more darkness here. Just around the edges. And we're not really going for a completely realistic look. But um, this is more decorative, I guess, than realistic. So... You can relax. I'm adding a little bit of pan red. It's just a primary red color, but it's not a liquid. It's in the little cake pan, the little pan. So that's what I'm adding around this, the edge of that. And I'm using my number six brush, ultra round, to do this with, just in case you were wondering. I'm going to wet that with some clear water. Add some more of the gold right here at the center of the flower. And of course, go ahead and get the rose and place that and let it bleed down into the yellow. And let them mix and mingle. It looks really pretty on the, in, the center of the flower. Then take the, a darker shade, the rose, a little more. It's not really a darker shade. It's just less water, more paint right there. And just uh, put in some little shadows just right around the edges just to kind of define the petal better. And just you, you want to continue to work around the painting, not touching, you know, doing a petal, letting it dry, going somewhere else on the painting and doing another petal. There's no really rhyme or reason to this. We're just doing it as we go around, trying not to let the petals bleed into each other. That's why we're letting them dry and not doing petals right next to each other. 
We're also just leaving some white spaces in between. That gives it a little variation. And again, we're not trying to make a realistic flower. We're just um, doing a little bit more of a decorative style. And it's all pretty much just wet on wet or either, um, well, I think almost all of it's wet on wet or either just direct painting right onto the dry paper. Those are the two main techniques that we're going to use in the whole painting. And I'm wetting it with clear water, adding the gold, which is a new gamboge, adding the rose, just like I did on all the other petals. We're not going to do it on every petal, but we're going to do it on the ones toward the center, because usually toward the center is where more of the yellow is when a flower has that yellow center. Here, I'm just going to paint in this little tiny, and I'm pretty much just directly painting the rose color on and then taking a little clear water and blending it to the edge. I'm taking the rose here, just going around this petal, then I'm taking clear water, blending it out, and that makes it look like it's curving a little bit. We like that little curve in there. And we're just gonna keep continue moving around each petal doing the same technique. It's nothing different. Each one is pretty much the same. The only difference is I'm not yet adding the yellow on every single petal. Some of them are just um, rows, just rows with um, water to blend it and a little bit of water to make it lighter in some areas. I'm letting each petal dry after I paint it, trying not to let the petals touch each other the ones that I'm painting near each other because then they'll bleed into each other and, and make a mess and we're trying to avoid that. And I want you to experiment with each one of your petals. Try different techniques. You don't even have to use the same colors I'm using. Just um. It's the simplest technique anyway, and we're going for decorative, not realistic, so there's no, we're not worrying about where the light source is coming from, we're not worrying about co correctly shadowing anything, we just want it to be pretty. This is like a really nice little Valentine's type painting, you could make a card or something like that using this technique. Wetting this one with water. Just clear water, putting the gold in there again. It's really pretty. I love the way that the gold and the uh, rose mix together. It looks just it's really pretty. And I'm just adding a little bit more of that red that's in the pan, the pan red just on the edges. It's just a primary red, and now I'm just pulling up some of the paint where it's a little too wet with the dry brush. If it gets a little wet and it doesn't look like you want it, you can just take your brush, dab it on a um, paper towel, and then pick up the excess paint and water. Just painting in a little, the little petals in here, giving it a dark edge that kind of fades off into the light edge. I'm coming back. This one's dry. We painted it a few minutes ago. I'm adding um, a really strong um, red color, the primary red that we've been using, but I um, haven't mixed it with much water. I put that along the edge and then I take the water, pull it out, and now I'm adding more of the red. And I've also mixed it with just a little teeny tiny bit of the rose color, but it's prime. the primary red is the bulk of the color. And 
now here I'm just painting directly on dry paper. I'm just painting a, a nice rose color, kind of dark. You know, you want to have a variety of dark petals and light petals and petals that have some dark and light. It gives it variation, makes it pretty. You know, you don't want to have all of your colors, all of your petals the same exact tone or the same exact darkness or lightness. You want to vary the darkness and lightness of your petals just to make it look pretty because we're not trying to make it look realistic. This is really just a fun type of a flower, just something that you can practice. Um, it's going to come out pretty good as long as you just follow the follow the um, instructions of you know, doing the wet on wet, doing clear water, then putting your color in, letting it fade together, putting a darker color around the edges. That's um that's the trick really. Now I'm taking some more of the, the pan red. It's a primary red and it's in a pan. It's not the liquid that I normally use. And I'm just painting it straight on dry paper so that it'll be a darker petal underneath this one. And it'll look like it's going back just a little bit and it gives it some variation. Now I'm just taking the clear water. I am blending it on out just like we've been doing on the other petals. And I'm just going to keep working my way around, working my way around. Deciding where I want dark and light. This is the nice uh, rose color on the tip end of this petal. And I'm going to come and do um, a little more shadow down here. While it's still a little bit wet and what I'm actually using a violet a little bit of a violet right there to make that shadow when while it's still wet I had put it in there while it's still wet and in between these little petals I'm gonna put a little bit more of the gold that's the center of the flower and the petals are bursting around that center just more clear water. It's the same, almost the same techniques on each petal. More rose, just dropping it in there, letting it bleed all over, letting it flow through the water. Now I'm adding more of the red on this petal. I've already wet it and I'm putting the red around the edge and just blending it out into the water, the clear water that I had already put out there. I'm just going to keep working around the flower, trying not to uh, let the petals bleed into each other, I'm leaving a little white space in between them. This is just some rose color and it's pretty um, thick. It doesn't have a lot of water and I didn't wet the paper first because I want it more, um, a little darker in here. turn it around and keep working putting down again clear water same technique I'm, I mean it is literally the same exact technique on almost every petal they're just painted individually and I vary the color somewhat on them some of them have the rose some of them have the primary red and um, the gold so that's the only thing that I'm really changing up on them is just the amount of color and the type of color but I'm still sticking with the main three colors of rose red and the gold and how I'm changing it up is by adding more water or less water to make it darker for the less water it gets lighter the more water you add to it this right here is a nice um, rose with very little water so painting it straight onto dry paper so that I can turn control it now I'm taking the clear water and blending it out just like that. Easy peasy. I want that one to the inside of that petal to be a, a kind of a light pale. So I've already painted it with clear water and just adding a really watery mixture of the rose in there. Making it a little darker along the edge of the fold up. 
Now we're going to finish this petal off. And I'm going to add a little darkness around it. It's wet. And I'm just adding more rose and letting the rose flow into the wetness. And that underlayer had already dried. That pink had already dried. So I had to clear, put the clear water to make it flow over it like that. Clear water again. Putting a little rose, letting it flow. And right now I'm using my number two brush. Just in case you didn't see that I had changed to a smaller brush for the smaller petals but you use the one that you're comfortable with. Now I'm adding a little bit more rose at the edge where a shadow might be. I'm taking the red, pan red, painting it directly on um, to the paper. It's not wet, it's dry paper. Not that much water into the red paint, so it's fairly thick. And I'm only gonna show you one flower because it's the same technique. So I'm just painting one flower, and you can paint the other flower on your own. Okay, now we're going to start on the leaves. I'm putting, it's sap green with a little bit of the turquoise blue, turquoise green mix, mixed. I uh, am just putting that on. I'm going to let it dry. This is just full on sap green with not much water mix that I'm placing now. That's going to be the darker part of the leaves, the shadowy part. And that's just sap green with none of the turquoise mixture. Actually, I think it's teal blue I'm putting in there with the sap green to make it a blue green. I'm going to get some of these tiny petals in here while I'm waiting for that to dry. And I'm just painting directly onto the paper with my number two brush. Paper is dry, just putting in some of the rose, little dots just to give it some interest. The petals are folded up under there. I'm going to paint this with more with a watered down sap green. This leaf over here while that uh, the other two dry. And I'm still using my number two brush. Over here, I'm going to add a little sap green, but with more, with some of the teal blue added. And that just gives it some color variation. You can see where the leaf is turned up. Now that this is dry, I'm going to come back over it with the same mixture but with less water. It's uh, the, the green with the teal blue and just paint in little squares leaving a little bit of the undercoat shining through to represent veins. Again, we, we're going decorative, not realistic, so it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't it just needs to be pretty and pretty we are doing this is some pretty painting I think and you just want to put the little patterns on there on the leaves make sure you let the underlayer dry first because you want to keep it crisp and you want those little veins to show through you don't want it to bleed together I'm just darkening up an edge there just trying to give it a little dimension although you can't really see it in the camera now we're going to this leaf do the same exact thing with the same mixture and that is the sap green with the teal blue not that much teal blue but enough just to change it a little bit and we are going to paint in the little designs making sure we leave the undercoat to peek through to mimic our veins just gives us an impression of having some veins there on the leaves gives a little design quality I like that now while it's still wet I'm taking some of the teal blue and just putting it at the very bottom and letting it blend up putting it on the edges just just to give it a little variation in color give it some depth 
even though it's decorative we want it to look nice so we're going to come back and put the indication of maybe some shadows also just add a little punch of color in there in those leaves and it's these leaves are still wet so the colors bleeding through you know blending well I like that it's not just sitting there it's bleeding into the wet color And that adds just a little more dimension to your decorative leaves I think I like it it's your leaves though you do them how you want to do them I'm come back and wetting these just a little bit adding a little bit more of the sap green just a little light wash over them and putting some of the sap green at the base of the little shapes just to give it some shadowy dimension give it a little interest make it pretty just like we did on the other leaf only on this one we're using more of the sap green on the other one we used more of the teal blue and it doesn't matter there's no uh, actual rules to this painting since it's kind of a fantasy now I'm taking the sap green painting over this leaf just like we did before we're gonna let that base dry and then we're gonna come back and paint designs over it and there you have it I hope that you uh, got the gist of it thanks for watching and um, and if you liked watching this, please subscribe and hit like. Thanks. I can't wait till next time.